Hello viewers. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Welcome to this channel. Now we have discussed what MRCS is and we have also discussed why it might be worthwhile to explore this option. Now the next question that needs to be answered is who? Who is eligible to appear for MRCS? And more importantly, are you eligible to appear for MRCS? There are a few myths, a little bit of confusion regarding who is eligible. So it will be my endeavor to make it crystal clear so that there is no room for confusion regarding this topic. So without further ado, let's get into it. Simply put, if you have an MBBS degree from an institution that is included in the World Directory of Medical Schools, you are eligible. Now for those people who do not know what a MBBS degree is, it is a primary medical qualification. So you need a primary medical qualification and you need to have obtained this from an institute that is included in the World Directory of Medical Schools. How to check that? You have to go on the website of the World Directory of Medical Schools, enter the name of your uh, institute from where you obtained your MBBS degree and see if the college or that medical school is included in the list. I'll leave a link to this uh, website in the description below. There is no upper age limit. I'm often asked this question. There is no upper age limit in terms of appearing for MRCS Part A. However, there is a limit in terms of number of attempts. So you are only allowed a maximum of six attempts to pass MRCS Part A. Uh, but there is no age limit in terms of how old a person can be. But yes, you cannot attempt it more than six number of times. So just to recap, doctors who have an MBBS degree from an institute that is included in the World Directory of Medical Schools can appear for MRCS. Why would somebody who has not done residency want to appear for MRCS? There can be many reasons. One possible reason is the syllabus of MRCS is largely a subset of the syllabus that one has to encounter while preparing for PG entrance exams. There are minor differences, but most of the syllabus overlaps and it is not as vast as the PG entrance exam syllabus. So if you have an MBBS degree, then you might uh, consider appearing for MRCS exam along with your PG entrance exams. By far the most popular uh, or the most commonly represented category of applicants for MRCS exams are the PG students. And from my own experience, I have seen several uh, students appearing for the MRCS exam while they were still residents pursuing post-graduation in general surgery. But again, this exam is not restricted to general surgery residents. Although the name is member of Royal College of Surgeons, it is not just general surgery. Even people pursuing ENT can appear for this exam. Orthopedics also, I think, can appear. People can also appear for this exam. But the Royal College of Surgeons is only going to ask you if you have a primary medical qualification or not. And they also want you to check if your parent institute is included in the World Directory of Medical Schools or not. So theoretically, even non-surgical trainees can appear for this exam because the Royal College of Surgeons only asks you about the primary medical qualification, not about the subject in which you're pursuing post-graduation. And of course, if you have completed post-graduation, then you can still appear for the MRCS exam. That's what I did. And uh, just a personal story here. On your left is a picture of the place where I was when I started preparing for MRCS Part A. And yes, it was after post-graduation. And on your right is a picture of the entrance of the place where I went to collect my MRCS diploma in October of 2023. This exam is attempted by thousands of people all over the world. And I want to encourage you to not feel overwhelmed, to not feel like it's an exam that is only meant for certain people. It is not. 
uh, anyone with an with a primary medical qualification can appear for this exam and anyone with the will to pass can pass this exam it is the questions are largely similar to what we have what we encounter in our in the in the number of exams that we have appeared for and the answers also remain the same with some minor differences so i strongly encourage anyone uh, who is eligible for mrcs exam to appear for the exam if uh, they feel it is worthwhile thank you so much for watching this video uh, there is a correction that i need to address i have been mispronouncing one of the locations of the royal college of surgeons i have been told that it is pronounced edinburgh not edinburgh as i was saying in the previous videos so i stand corrected thank you so much for the valuable feedback and i'll see you in the next one thank you so much edinburgh not edinburgh thank you so much take care